about a year and a half ago, we you know, put together a team for about 12 weeks of some of the top um, conceptual illustrators in the world and just worked on things like Star Wars and stuff. It was just this great co-op of artists and you know, we'd have these storyboard sessions in the morning and then it was like making an anime movie and then everybody would project the storyboard from the mall and everybody would talk about it and the artwork and everything else. It was, it was a lot of fun and we created the world and it was, the artwork is just staggeringly beautiful. had this blueprint for the movie, which was the costumes, which was 99% of the props, the buildings, the whole world, and it was integrated completely. And the beauty of that was we did it without under the pressure of actually having to make the movie yet. We could just design a world and not worry yet how we're going to pay for it. The movie's really sold on the world and the concept and the creature. People really responded to the whole idea of, you know, alien and Viking time. What we wanted was an animal. This was an animal. It was terrifying, it was deadly, it was scary, but it wasn't something that would seem incomprehensible. That was another thing, it had to work within the Viking world. Now that is not a bear. Because in our, in our mythology that we were creating, we were thinking that, okay, if this is the source of the Beowulf legend, then it had to be something at once both alien to the Vikings, but somehow fit within their own worldview. What did he tell you? Some lies about a dragon. I mean, the Vikings had dragons, they had other monsters, they had all these things in their, their panoply of gods and creatures and demons, so this had to fit within that view. It had to fit within a natural setting on Earth. It had to be an animal, it had to be alien, but it had also at the end to look like it could be carved into the masthead of a Viking ship and belong there. We wrote a description down, of course, blah, 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 ooh, nasty creature, big teeth. A lot of people took shots at it, and it just wasn't working. And then I befriended uh, a really, really terrific, amazing, really nice guy named Patrick Totopoulos. When you get a Patrick design, you get him in the best sense of the word. And so he read it, and for free, lad said he loved the idea, and he drew up a design. And we looked at it and said, this is it. It was both animal and alien. It was something that was both terrifying and had a sense of nobility and character about it. Another thing, um, detail-wise, on the creature that Howard was very keen on, it's part of the storytelling, is, uh, is the bioluminescence. I like the idea that there's a sense of beauty within the animals. I mean, I like to do creatures. I like to design creatures that have a sense of elegance. I think. The more beautiful the creature, the more scary it can get. Beautiful, you know, if you follow me, meaning beautiful, but there's an aesthetic about it. It's not just a big blob with like a bunch of ugly teeth, but it, it's got quite, like we would say in Hollywood, kind of like sexy in some way. The Morwen, uh, you know, originally was conceived as uh, a mixture, uh, a hybrid of animatronic work and computer graphics work. And ultimately, uh, because of uh, uh, time and budget, and, and uh, what we needed to do in the movie, we kind of leaned heavily towards CGI. Um, we have built uh, prosthetic pieces or animatronic pieces, like the, the claw of the Morwen, the tail, and we've also built some specialty pieces. We've built like the head of the Morwen and we painted that green. It's kind of a hybrid. We can do things with this uh, green shape that are kind of like what you would do with an animatronic. It creates interaction with the environment and you can interact with the actors with it, but yet you, you put the CGI on top of that. I mean, you're walking around with a sword and, uh, you know, uh, especially playing my character, I'm meant to be this great warrior, which couldn't be further from the truth. 
uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, like you, you, you get this sort of false sense of bravado, and like even walking through the village wearing this kind of outfit and this get-up, it's like a childhood dream. Like you always like play dress up, you never really get like these amazing costume people to like design these things specially around you and you know to uh, to have this sort of part written for you and you know it's 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 awesome. All the sword training, the people who are working with us, the stunt coordinators and it's you know it's amazing. <laughs> Freya, um, she's a warrior, um, and that was part of the sort of main appeal for me um, because um, I've always, always wanted to do an action film. She's uh, she's very, very feisty. Um, she can throw a damn good punch. Well, <laughs> they make it look like I can throw a punch. I'm a weed in real life, but um, she can wield a sword very well. There's a fantastic sword fight um, between myself and John Hurt. That's been really fun. I kind of get my teeth into something so physical. 